Hi and welcome back to the inflatable vehicle project, it's episode 7. For those of you who just want to see me test drive the vehicle, you have to jump ahead a couple of minutes. Uh, and for the rest of you, please let me guide you through the entire test of this, uh, this vehicle today. Uh, and let's start out with uh, where we left off last time. Uh, episode 6 was all about just establishing that I had indeed found a good fix for the, uh, the uh, drivetrain control system. I had a problem with burning transistors and I had a lot of interference in the system because of you know, the inductance of the motors and the wiring and all that. Uh, but that turned out well. Uh, so now I have full control over the vehicle. However, there are still a couple of uh, lingering problems uh, that I wanted to sort out before I went out riding the vehicle uh, on the road. So it's, it's basically uh, three uh, problems that I have spotted so far and uh, they are not as acute as the, um, the driving of the transistor uh, but it's still uh, three annoying things that I wanted to take care of. So let's take a look at them. So here you can see the first problem. It's the problem of the wheels inflating unevenly. Uh, this is from the previous episode and I added restrictors to the rear hoses but they turned out to be too restrictive. Uh, so I need some way to adjust uh, my restrictor so I can find out the right value. The simple solution I came up with is this 3D printed tube, uh, which allows me to uh, control how much I restrict the uh, airflow through it. So I added one of these for each wheel and uh, it looks like this when it's in action. And uh, during the uh, inflating process here, you can see me from time to time adjusting the valves. And it turns out that this was a good fix. Uh, and now I have uh, secured the screws in the position where the wheels inflate evenly. And this time I finally came around to fixing the, the trivial but kind of obvious difficulty of getting up in the vehicle. Uh, since the ground clearance is like one meter, it's a giant step up to that platform. So I added an aluminum bar, it's hanging into uh, belts. So I simply divided that meter into half meters. So it's a kind of easier step to get, to get up in the vehicle. It looks like this. And in that clip you can actually hear the vacuum cleaners humming away and that's actually the third issue that I wanted to clear out before today's test ride. So the, the problem was that in some circumstances or under some circumstances when both vacuum cleaners switches were turned on and I connected the 240 volt battery to the circuit the vacuum cleaners uh, got caught in a um, oscillating state, uh, a self-resonant oscillating state. So they were turned on, but the uh, the PWM system was turned off. Uh, but the inductance in the system uh, self-oscillated, and uh, that um, noise got to the gate of the transistor powering the vacuum cleaners. So they turned on but at very low power. Uh, so they perhaps, I don't know, I guess the vacuum cleaners themselves probably just draw like a tenth of an amp or something, uh, but they were rotating, so they were actually turned on, uh, but the transistor was really in a state of high resistance, so the transistor heated up in a matter of seconds. Uh, so I really needed to clear that out. Uh, well, I mean, the simple th fix is just to give it a quick uh, throttle up so that you sort of uh, get the PWM system working and uh, uh, taking control over the charge in the gate uh, of the transistor and then the system just turns off if you let go uh, or, or it, you can ramp it up to full power uh, but that's, uh, that's the difficulty is that when I'm outside it's not certain that I will hear the vacuum cleaners uh, going at that low power setting so I might miss that they are slightly turned on by this 
uh, resonant uh, state which would quickly destroy the transistor and I think the only the only reason for the transistor to actually survive that is that I'm using these industrial grade transistors with a fast body diode so they are actually rated to drive inductive loads without um, uh, freewheeling diodes but uh, anyway so I think if I had this kind of more ordinary transistor I think they would just have blown instantly when I connected the power and I would not understand why because the oscillating or the resonance is so rapid. Let me show you on the oscilloscope. So here I'm just plugging in the battery and the vacuum cleaner starts although the PWM circuit is turned off. And I'm just uh, doing this again. You can see the vacuum cleaners spinning up when I connect the power. But thankfully the fix was very simple. I just added a 1.5 ohm resistor to the uh, gate from the PWM system and that prevented the self-oscillating state to, uh, to develop. And now there's just one final thing I want to show you. Uh, previous test I had two identical transistors on the right side chopping the, the uh, current to the two right wheel motors and uh, one identical transistor on the left side. But it turned out that this single transistor did the job just as well as the uh, double transistor side so I removed the redundant transistor on this side. So uh, for today's test the uh, system is symmetric Okay, so it's finally time to get outdoors uh, with the vehicle and, and do some practical tests. Uh, in retrospect, everything looks so simple, but uh, when we did the uh, filming of this uh, episode, uh, I really did not know if I even would get the vehicle out from the garden. Uh, so I was going really slow and I took uh, the, the liberty to, to take the uh, neighbor's driveway out to the road because it's slightly larger than the opening that we have. Uh, and um, I didn't know if I would have like a puncture like three meters out from the garden. So, so uh, I did this really slow in the beginning because I really wanted to go full throttle at least once before I get a puncture or you know whatever happens. Uh, so we're going to take it step by step. But you have already seen the inflating phase. So I will start with uh, me getting up in the vehicle and uh, doing the first couple of meters of test driving. Yes. The cool thing is uh, how good the uh, fine control is of the vehicle. You can go really slow and have a uh, very detailed control over it. And I'm just a couple of inches away from the uh, from the house. Yeah, sorry about that. Here I'm thinking I'm going to get a puncture for sure just driving over those sort of hard sticky bushes and here we sneak over to the neighbor's driveway. I did measure the opening to be like good enough to uh, drive the vehicle uh, in between their um, the ma mailbox and the the um, the hedge there, but it was really tight. <laughs> I 
I'm slightly stuck on the mailbox, but it's still standing, so it's good. And here you can see how well it turns on the tarmac with the... Uh, uh, it's covered in the... Uh, like sand, because it was snow for just, uh, just a week ago. So, that went well. And here, right from the start, it's evident that the uh, differential uh, drive system is inadequate to have a uh, good directional control over the vehicle. So I have to stop and make these tank turns all the time to make even minor adjustments. Uh, so that's something that I will have to address later on. I was kind of sad when uh, all the snow uh, disappeared. But the good thing is that this enables me to ride the vehicle over three different surfaces in this first test. So we have this uh, tarmac with uh, sand on it and uh, I will be riding it over wet grass and also over some snow and ice that's still left. So that's a good thing, but I really want to uh, make this first test ride in, in uh, a white winter landscape. But uh, as it turned out, it was uh, quite informative. Yeah, so here you can see the limited view I have, uh, and also the need for a better, better steering system. I actually had to stop here and make this uh, small tank turn adjustment to follow the road. Well, it's not much of a car chase, but it's kind of amusing anyway. I'm just going to uh, turn left in a moment and uh, get out of the way. But it would be interesting to, uh, <laughs> to know what he was thinking at the time. Kind of nervous now, I suppose. And now it's completely unexpectedly just about to get very interesting. This is the first and only mishap during this test. So, you heard that? Let's check it out. It turned out to be the rivets holding the uh, ball bearing positioning clamp in place that got torn off uh, at the uh, rear right wheel. So you can see the the bearing there has slided in towards the middle of the vehicle. So the right wheel is uh, much wider and ha doesn't have the same diameter as the other wheels. Let's take a look in slow motion and see what's going on. And here you can see an oscillation starting and I'm bumping quite fiercely up and down. Yeah, <laughs> look at that. Wow. So this is what I love about doing these tests. Uh, you always learn something new. Uh, so it turns out that uh, on snow and, and uh, gravel and stuff like that, the tank turning uh, system works very well, but on wet grass, the, uh, the grip of the tires is just too good. So uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, fabric of the tires are slightly wrinkled uh, when you're trying to uh, to move the vehicle uh, so the volume of the uh, uh, tires change and the diameter as well and you get a slight uh, pressure increase in the tire that has the best grip for the moment and then the grip just uh, slides loose again and the wheel slides loose and it expands again and you have start started a oscillating uh, um, effect in the vehicle so, so it's quite bumpy I mean it's, it, it, when you sit in there it's really like <laughs> you feel that you're kind of torturing the vehicle um, and uh, this uh, also gives me even more uh, incitement to uh, to develop some other sort of steering for this vehicle because it works 
so nice on, on gravel and on snow but I really want to be able to follow an ordinary street and, and go over wet grass of course without um, like overstraining the vehicle. Uh, but uh, at the moment uh, when this happened I, I thought that I also had some sort of slight puncture but I couldn't really interpret that popping sound uh, when it occurred so I thought that I had slight puncture so I, I just want to take the opportunity to to quickly explore uh, full throttle um, to make sure that the electrical system uh, would hold up for that so, so that I could get some more knowledge out of this test. So I, I just carry on and go full uh, speed forward and uh, I went back again before I, I realized that uh, this problem was something that I could fix outdoors which I do uh, later on. Let's check it out. And uh, here I'm turning around again and you can see the bouncing, the oscillation. Yeah, you can see the uh, right rear wheel there, it's uh, slightly deformed. Okay, so now it's time to fix the problem, so I'm just uh, adding a couple of bigger rivets and I'm doing that for all wheels. I think it can go up to 30. Yeah, I'm going to gas up on it. And here I'm coming in over some ice and snow and I'm only using differential throttle to steer and it works so much better when the vehicle is on a slippery surface. And that's also true for the uh, tank steering. It's so much smoother compared to just wet grass. It's uh, slightly oscillating but not at all as much as previous. And here you can see it's a little bit jerky at the top end of the throttle so I'm skidding around a little bit left to right. It's even more visible in this uh, drone footage here, but it's so fun. And here you can see my seven-year-old drone pilot. She's helping me out with the aerial photos. And I have a three-year-old uh, co-driver, which is uh, also a part of the test program. And in a little while here you will see me turning around again on the uh, wet grass and you can see the uh, you can look for the oscillation again so uh, it has great grip and it's really struggling to turn around and here's a uh, aerial view of the same event And uh, then, just for comparison, we're doing the same thing on, uh, on ice and snow. And it's so smooth. Such a difference. And here you can see how the fabric is wrinkling when I'm turning around. You can see how it loses grip and it gains grip and the uh, diameter changes. And uh, here's a short amusement park ride. So we're doing this uh, merry-go-round in uh, both directions.
So it's time to end this first real outdoor test of the vehicle and I have gained uh, a lot of knowledge and I have uh, a lot of things to reflect upon and I really want to improve the steering of this vehicle so that will be my next uh, goal to have a uh, steering that allows me to uh, have a more intuitive control over the vehicle and and, uh, and being able to uh, follow a road like this without having to stop and make this uh, tank turning action. But it was uh, quite successful for, uh, for uh, the first real test with the uh, bearing clamp as the only real showstopper. And the uh, tires are holding up surprisingly well. They really sound uh, really, what do you call it, stressed when you're turning here on this uh, surface. But afterwards, I could not find any marks from uh, this uh, test. So um, that seems promising. But I'm really thinking about adding some sort of protective layer, at least over the uh, sewing thread, so that it doesn't uh, get abraded so that it uh, breaks. Yeah, and this is the alternative way of uh, handling these tight situations. So the uh, cord to the uh, control handle is long enough so that you can actually uh, walk with the vehicle instead of sitting in it when you're driving it. But of course it's not as fun, but I thought that I had stretched my luck already today, so and this time I, uh, I walked the vehicle back. So everything is backwards from the position I'm in, so it's very <laughs> awkward and I'm kind of scared to run myself over, but it worked out fairly well. So that's pretty much it. Let's uh, check the uh, battery voltage. I haven't charged the battery since last time, so the battery voltage here is from the two first test rides of the vehicle. So here's just a quick test of the uh, battery voltage after this test run, and it's uh, 16 volt per cell. This is representative for the uh, pack. <laughs> <laughs> 16 volts per cell, that's an exciting voltage for lithium batteries. Uh, well, okay, so, so English is not my, my uh, first language uh, and that means that, at least for me, uh, my precision in uh, my language is just missing sometimes. But I think that you are intelligent enough to understand what I mean. So, okay, the, uh, the battery packs, the individual battery packs voltage was 16 volts, uh, which means, of course, that the cell voltage is 4 volt. And that means that I have only used up around 16% of the uh, capacity in the batteries. Uh, and I did not make any um, dedicated measurements for the, um, for the length of this test ride. But my guesstimate is that this means that I have a range of around 10 kilometers at least with the uh, current battery setup in the vehicle. And that's uh, acceptable, I think. Okay, so next up now is uh, to improve on the steering so it's uh, more comfortable uh, driving the vehicle on a road well, and off-road as well. And um, as always, if you enjoy the content, please consider subscribing and I will see you in the next episode.